I'm going to read you some information. And just to be clear, YouTube. This is just me reading information. I know you've already liked to censor me over at the Agorist Nexus um, because I'm too based. And my video uh, where I went over Agenda 2030 was one of the only ones censored um, on that, uh, that, that page. I know, you, I know you want to censor me. You know, and a bunch of people want me censored, too. They want me gone. They would rather I just stop sharing this sort of thing and uh, stop posting content. Uh, I had to deal with a bunch of uh, people this morning um, who were, you know, trying to talk some shit. But uh, that was dealt with, you know, because I like keeping worthwhile people around. But uh, basically, you know, this is just me reading some information, just like I just like I always do, and it's from sites that typically people are totally okay with, you know. Um, sort of like you know how YouTube is typically okay with uh, the UN, but they weren't okay with me reading any information about Agenda Twenty Thirty. I'll I'll stop bringing that up for now. But the point is that um, <laughs> here are a few articles, and uh, I feel like there's something that you should know. There is a global fertility crash happening right now. Yeah, there's there's a there's a birth rate that you basically need in order to sustain a population. And it's supposed to be, like, two babies for every one woman. That's what it says in this article, anyway. At least two children per woman. That's what's needed to ensure a stable population from generation to generation. In the 1960s, the fertility rate was five live births per woman. By 2017, it had fallen to 2.43, close to, close to that critical threshold. Population growth is vital for the world economy. It means more workers to build homes and produce goods, more consumers to buy things and spark innovation, and more citizens to pay taxes and attract trade. While the world is expected to add more than 3 billion people by 2100, according to the UN, that'll likely be high point. Falling fertility rates and aging populations will make serious changes, challenges that will be felt more acutely in some places than other. With the global average fertility rate was still above the rate of replacement, technically 2.1 children per women, in 2017, about half of all countries had already fallen below it, up to, up from one in 20, just half a century ago. For places such as the U.S. and parts of Western Europe, which historically are attractive to migrants, loosening immigration policies could make up for low birth rates. In other places, more drastic policy interventions may be called for. Most of the available... I wonder what they mean by that. Like, what are you going to do? Like, force fuck? It... <laughs> um... And in general, this is this is the vibe, right? We're dealing with lower fertility rates. Well, here's a Bloomberg article from 2018 where they said a world with fewer babies spells economic trouble. Righto? Righto. Well, uh, you know... Forget the prophecies saying overpopulation will starve the planet. The human race is, race is, appro is approaching the point where it's no longer reproducing enough to expand the global headcount. In the world's biggest economies, the U.S., China, Japan, and Germany, it's already happening or will soon. Economists say these countries could see slower economic growth unless they increase their working age populations by accepting immigrants, possibly from regions with higher fertility rates like parts of Asia and Africa. Lower fertility rates, the number of live births per woman, could also threaten safety net programs like pensions and health care. So... They were saying, years and years ago, that having less babies um, is bad for economies. 
mostly because there's a ballooning population and you need enough babies to hold it up by growing into adults that they can then economically exploit. Um, and then Bloomberg later on says, boy, oh, we sure do have a fertility crisis. Gosh, darn it. Well, you know, it's almost like there's a big population control agenda. You know, antinatalist websites quoting a lot of figures who agree with them. You know, a whole stop having kids movement. You know. And it's almost like it's been that way for a bit because people have been saying that the world will become overpopulated and that overpopulation will cause the climate apocalypse, the climate catastrophe we're all headed for that means that they need to issue carbon credits and, you know, control our everyday behavior because otherwise we might be producing too much carbon. It's all about carbon, they promise, right? Well, wouldn't it be lovely if they had a way to lower some stuff, you know, just uh, throwing, spitballing, throwing some ideas out there. Wow, would you look at that? A, 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 a fucking article from, from 2022 where, where a Bloomberg person is, is citing hidden harm of the lockdowns and the policies surrounding the, um, the, the, the big old beer virus. You know, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be a fucky thing if the same people who said that there weren't enough babies to adults had, um, had a thing where people were starting to be more anxious, mental health issues spiked, and those mental health issues led to, you know, um... Rates of anxiety and depression rose about 25% worldwide in the first year of COVID-19, another indication of the widespread harm on mental health inflicted by the pandemic. Young people were at the greatest increased risk of suicide and self-harm, and women bore the brunt of the emotional and psychological burden, according to a report from the World Health Organization. I am quoting the World Health Organization and Bloomberg, YouTube, and Twitter, and whoever else decides that this video needs to be censored. Go fuck yourself in advance. People with chronic conditions such as asthma or cancer were also more likely to develop symptoms of mental disorders during the outbreak. Oh, and, you know, for anybody who's read my article on 10 ways the government's uh, COVID response worsened your health, you know that they've also massively increased the uh, um, incidence of sort of problems because they've, uh, they, they've chosen, and, and it, it was a choice, to lock people down and also to control hospitals, you know, control hospitals to say that, you can't do other things than COVID treatments, and we will protract other treatments. You know, do them later. That's not going to cause any trouble whatsoever, though. I'm, I shouldn't even be approaching that, uh, that subject, right? Uh, evidence of the ongoing toll of isolation restrictions and financial worries are continuing to mount. The WHO report mirrors a study in the Lancet Medical Journal last year that found the pandemic had resulted in an extra 53.2 million cases of major depressive disorder and an extra 76.2 million cases of anxiety disorders globally. <gasps> Creating a, an environment of fear, compulsion, and control might stress people out and worsen their mental health conditions? Shucks, oh, golly gee. And it's not like, of course, the U.S. government did research for a really fucking long time on how to cause trauma in people so that 
the trauma that was caused in them made them easier to control. Not like that might have been, you know, M or K or Ultra or anything like that. Not like the MK programs were affiliated with a bunch of other CIA stuff that caused a bunch of uh, mental health problems and taught them how to cause mental health problems. They didn't know what they were doing. This is just an accidental result of honest and good policies that every, every honest and good American should support. Right? Right, okay. Glad we're on the same page about that. Whoa, what's that? U.S. US life expectancy sees its biggest two-year decline in a century? Man! Who could have thunk that would happen? Certainly not them. You know. Certainly not them! It couldn't be them! Except if you look at the second line there, that drug overdoses are key death drivers. Um, you know, COVID-19 pandemic and drug overdoses are key death drivers. Um, and you compare that to the previous one. Yeah, you lock people down and make their lives worse. And they're going to want to inject more and smoke more and snort more. And it's going to happen more. And you know this because of the Rat Park experiment and all of the social implications from accompanying research that went along similar models and found out that people respond in very similar ways when you fuck their lives up. Somehow they don't want to be here anymore. Somehow escaping with something that's destroying their body and mind is fucking better. So somebody who's clean and sober and fit and all of that Somebody who's trying to keep their life in order, that's a threat to this sort of model. But at least they're not, you know, <laughs> contributing too much to the, uh, to the, you know, problem of not enough babies. You know, because they were locked down. We were all locked down. And fucking dropped. For some reason, when people aren't allowed out in order to go seek fucks, they stop giving as many fucks. Wowos, who could have seen that coming? Certainly not them. They couldn't have seen any of this coming. You know, or, or seen the coming because there was less of it. Wait, what? What's this headline? That headline from before, that was only a month ago. They were, they were saying that it was bad, you know? A month ago, they were saying it was bad. Um, well, less than a month ago, you know? Um, less than a month ago, they were saying it was bad. And, 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 and years ago, they were, they were already anticipating the badness. And this was sent, like, half a year ago. And, and this, this is, this is a, a, a pretty new chart, isn't it? So I wonder, I wonder, oh, what they could gain from something like that. Huh. What grim silver lining could they have possibly gleaned from such tragedy, such unplanned and accidental tragedy? Well... This was written in 2017, and <laughs> it was already talking about how Americans are dying younger, saving corporations billions. We did it, guys. It's already happened. It already started happening then, and uh, they kind of proved that model worked already. Man. It's almost like they had some kind of knowledge of this kind of trend from a variety of potential, you know, stimuli. Almost. And, and you know, 
just gosh and golly gee, let's let's break away from Bloomberg for just a moment. Don't worry. We'll get back to Twitter's favorite fucking newspaper. Facebook's favorite fucking newspaper. Something that always gets a huge amount of support from the press, from social media, from mega corporations. We'll get back to that at some point. But, you know, let's just take a break and go to this one. And, whoa. This is, this is pretty much exactly what they expected would happen. And, and, it, and it's what was happening according to their, to their rags, right? It's like, it's like deaths associated with alcohol, drugs, and suicide took the lives of 186,763 Americans in 2020, a 20% one-year increase in the combined death rate and the highest number of substance misuse deaths ever recorded for a single year. While alcohol, drug, and suicide deaths have been increasing for decades, the 2020 increase was unprecedented and driven by a 30% increase in the rate of drug-induced deaths and a 27% increase in the rate of alcohol alcohol-induced deaths. Combined rates of alcohol, drug, and suicide deaths increased in all 50 states except New Hampshire, and for the first time, two states, West Virginia and New Mexico, surpassed 100 deaths per 100,000 state residents from alcohol, drugs, and suicide combined in a single year. Man, it's almost like their lives were made worse and as a result of their lives having been made worse, they were doing destructive things to their bodies and minds. And that destruction eventually resulted in this sort of thing happening, which is the ultimate form of destruction, thus reducing the amount of adult, you know, adults in the population, and, what do you know, increasing the fertility rate by default. Because that's what you do. If you lower the amount of adults, especially adult women, as Bloomberg stated, um, you will raise the fertility rate, which is babies per adult women. Or am I just reading too many of these articles that these social media mega corporations love? Well, then let's just keep on looking at some Bloomberg. Oh, shucks. Damn it. This is my fucking Twitter. Don't follow me. I'm evil. Anytime Twitter tells you to support Bloomberg's rag, they're supporting a racist fascist. Remember, this is the guy who admitted that his policy was to go into minority communities and throw them against the wall. BLM, though, right? Black Lives Matter to Twitter? Yeah, yeah, I posted this because Bloomberg has been strongly responsible for a huge amount of terrible things, right? But, you know, I also posted it because they're constantly promoting his site. And, and, and I sort of feel like it's necessary to remind people of this being recent. Um, and also to remind people of what they've been saying. And they've been saying this for a while, right? That fertility rates are going to decline in high stress. You know? And also that... All rich countries will contend with a fertility crisis. So what did I have to say? I said state capitalist environments will have that. Mike Bloomberg has a net worth of $82 billion. Bloomberg LP is worth... Uh, sorry, $82 billion. Bloomberg LP is worth $22.5 billion. If wealth correlates with this problem, stop being hypocrites. Garbage. And, and, and like, you know, just reminding people that throw them against the wall was worse... Um, then grab him by the pussy. Throw him against the wall was, you know, along the same lines as the Amber Heard thing where, hey, you know, against what wall? It's almost like the people who are pushing these sorts of narratives don't actually follow their own suit because Bloomberg funded somebody who wanted people to, like, ignore Tara Reid and oh, would you look at this? Ah, oh, shucks, oh golly gee. Here's their tweet where they said, Inflation stings the most if you earn less than $300,000. Here's how to deal. Take the bus. Don't buy in bulk. 
Try lentils instead of meat. Nobody said this would be fun. Bloomberg is poor shaming people and acting superior. So here's a great Mother Jones vid about why that's jive. He also threw full weight behind Democrats in 2020, helping them beat rich guy Trump, who has 5% of Mike's net worth. These people are safe from their own disaster. So let me mute this so that I don't get copy struck, but like, it's almost like they knew. It's almost like these people are corrupt billionaires and state capitalists and baked into their wealth is the sort of um, invincibility from any problem they might cause. And the Ordo Abkeo that's baked into this sort of system, that means that these extremely wealthy people get to continue saying whatever they want. You know, because they can admit that the high-stress lockdown environment caused a huge amount of problems. They can admit that the um, suicide rate is up that the fertility rate is down. They can admit... (laughs) They can admit that their lockdowns are a huge reason for this sort of thing and that drug use is up, right? Definitely don't lock up Hunter Biden, though. You know, he's uh, the, the son of Joe Biden, so when he smokes crack and is found to be a massive crack smoking crack addict, you can't lock him up because Mike Bloomberg and people like him have donated some of their extreme fuck tons of money to ensure that Biden gets to stay. You know, and it's almost like this is a massive club, a big club that you ain't in. But I'm sure that all of these people that are already listed, you know, they're totally, um, they're totally ethical and they would never do anything wrong. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Mike Bloomberg. At the time that video was done, which was years ago, was $62,800,000,000. Already more than the entire GDP of North Korea, all NBA teams combined. 15000 per month since the dawn of humanity. Meaning you could just hand that to people. His net worth... And you could um, solve a lot of fucking problems, like the twenty billion uh, in 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 homelessness assistance that would solve the homeless problem every year. You know things like that. It's almost like ah, I hazard to say this, and I really shouldn't fucking say it. God, it's it's so it's so wrong. I should just stick to the agenda and say that. They would never do anything like this on purpose. They don't have any plans to do anything like this on purpose. They didn't do any of this on purpose. And anyone who insists otherwise is a disinformation agent, probably from Russia, conspiracy theorist, dirtbag garbage person. Holy shit, how how scummy would you have to be? to believe what they say when they say it. Darn it. Anyway, I hope the sarcasm helped enough people uh, smile a little bit today uh, through this uh, grim silver lining that they want to claim is a good thing. Uh, I got a family call to attend to because one of the most important things to uh, getting rid of the elites is not letting them conquer your spirit and uh, not letting them control you by proxy. So I'm going to go deal with that and uh, encourage my own personal connections and health just like I usually do. Because my goal isn't to acquiesce to this system. My goal is to smash the fucking state.